Hey y'all, it's CJ and welcome to Smoky Beginnings. Today we're going to go over how to smoke ribs on the pit barrel cooker. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. Sit back and relax while we go over how to make these ribs. Let's start by preparing the ribs. What I'm looking for is any loose hanging pieces of meat that would normally just burn off. What I'm also looking for is any bones that are popping out or just barely attached. These are usually the ones that'll fall off or will just burn up during the cooking process. Everybody's gonna tell you to remove that little membrane or silk strain on the back of the rib. Today, I'm gonna leave it on. All I'm gonna do is just score the membrane with my knife, a couple horizontal cuts, couple vertical cuts, just to loosen it up just a little bit. These are gonna be a competition style rib which means that the bite is gonna be just a little bit tough. If you want fall off the bone, if you want mushy type of ribs, take that membrane off. Next, we're gonna go ahead and apply our binder. Today, it's gonna to be yellow mustard, but you can use mayonnaise, oil, or you can use water. You're not gonna taste this binder. If you like content like this, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want the full recipe, you can find it on SpokenBeginnings.com. I will leave a link in the comments. A tip here for the binder and the seasoning is to use just one of your hands so that your other hand is clean so that you can pick up any other utensils or food items. After applying a thin layer of the binder on both sides, it will then be time to apply our rub. Today, we're going to be using Fire and Smoke Society's Perry Cola BBQ Rub. This rub tastes great on anything you want to barbecue. Pork butts, pork chops, tenderloin, chicken wings, turkey, brisket, you name it, and it's good on it. The flavor profile is the perfect blend of tart cherry, sugar, paprika, coriander, allspice, and a natural cola flavor. There is a distinct soda pop sweetness and a hit of cherry and a whiff of savory spice. Make sure that the front and back of the ribs are generously covered along with the sides and both ends. By applying a binder along with generously seasoning the ribs, we are setting ourselves up to have a nice bark. Next, let's talk about hook placement. I'm gonna place one hook on the thin side of the rib, about three ribs down. Then I'm gonna place a second hook on the thick side, about two ribs in. In just a few moments, you're gonna see why I'm putting two hooks on each rib. Now that the ribs are seasoned and we have placed our hooks, it's time to get these ribs on the smoker. Today, we're gonna to be using the pit barrel cooker, which is a charcoal smoker. We're gonna start with one full charcoal chimney and we're gonna fill the charcoal basket about three fourths of the way. You can either line your charcoal chimney with paper or you can put the paper right on top of the charcoal, light it so you get this little fireball effect thing and then put your charcoal chimney right on top. You will know when your charcoal is ready by the bluish smoke and the fact that the top coals are now lit and have ashed over. Grab your heat resistant glove and dump your charcoal chimney on top of your charcoal basket. Before placing the charcoal basket within the smoker, add some flavoring wood. Today I'm using hickory and apple wood. Place the charcoal basket within the smoker, insert the rods, close the lid, and then give the smoker about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes in order to come up to temp. Finally, it's time to get these ribs on the smoker. Remember that I used two hooks? Well, I'm gonna put the thin sided hook towards the bottom, which is going to be the heat source. Then I'm gonna have the thick side towards the top, which is away from the heat source. It has been about an hour, and now it's time to check the ribs to see how they're doing. Already, we can see that we have a beautiful color on these ribs. While I have this lid open, I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to check for temp, even though I know that these ribs are not anywhere close to being done. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to check to see if the bark has set up yet. I will do this by taking my finger and pressing on the rib. If I have any rub on my finger, then I know that the bark has not set. If my finger is clean, then I know that the bark has been set. Bark has been set, and these ribs are definitely not close to being done. Back on the smoker they go, and I'll check in probably another 30 minutes to maybe 45 minutes at the most. One thing I did want to mention is that now I am taking the thin side from the bottom and moving it to the top and moving the thick side towards the heat source. By having two hooks, we're able to rotate our meat, give it the old flippy flop so that it cooks evenly. We'll close the lid and we'll come back in 30 to 45 minutes. 
and take a look at these ribs. So it's been about 30 minutes and we're looking at the ribs right now and they just have an absolutely beautiful color. We're checking the temperature, we're checking the bark, making sure that it has set. And now what we're doing is we're basting the ribs with apple juice. You can either use a baster or you can use a bottle and spritz the ribs. I'm adding apple juice to the ribs because we're not going to wrap them. These ribs are going to be unwrapped the entire time. The apple juice adds moisture to the rib. Now that we've added the apple juice, we're going to put these ribs back on the smoker and then check back in another 30 minutes. It's been about 30 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and check on the ribs and I'm checking for temperature. What I'm looking for is I want my rib to be somewhere between 185 degrees Fahrenheit and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. These ribs aren't quite at that internal temperature just yet, so I'm gonna baste them again and then put them back on the smoker. We are getting pretty close, but we're just not at the exact internal temperature that we're looking for. It's been about 20 minutes and now it's time to check on the ribs again. And as you can see, they have just an absolute beautiful color. We're gonna take our temperature here and uh, hopefully we should be pretty close to our uh, desired internal temperature. These ribs are looking pretty good. The temperature probe is moving in and out of the rib with very little resistance, indicating that the ribs are done. So I hit my internal temperature. Another way to tell that your ribs are done is the bend test. So pick up the ribs and if they kind of fold in on themselves like this, then your ribs are done. These ribs are done, so it's time to pull them from the smoker. I have let the ribs rest for 10 minutes after pulling them from the smoker. It's now time to remove the hooks and cut into these ribs. The easiest way to slice ribs is to flip them over so that the bones are facing you and cut in between the bones. Once you have sliced the ribs, go ahead and admire your work. Take a look at that smoke ring Give it a little squeeze, make sure that the juices are running out, and it's time to serve them to your guests. We decided to leave the barbecue sauce on the side and let the guests decide what sauce they wanted on their ribs. And there you have it. That's how you smoke ribs on a charcoal smoker. All you gotta do is have some ribs and enjoy. Until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.